and welcome to season three of Community Storytelling. I'm Lisa Chrysler. And uh, my guest today is somebody who I really never expected to interview, at least his profession, but here we are. And you know, we're a community. We talk about everything. So I got with me today, Nicholas Welsenbach, and you may know him. And if you do, I'll have to say I'm sorry because you probably met him under unfortunate circumstances. But Nicholas is managing partner of Darlene Fisher Chapel in Los Gatos and Campbell and also Los Gatos Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is where my parents are both buried. Los so Gattis we Memorial have a Park. connection right there. <laughs> yes, Los Gatos Memorial yes. Park. So is it owned? What is the connection between all of three? So all three, uh, actually there's a fourth, the original, which is the downtown San Jose, um, which the Fishers, Clyde Fisher, opened in 1936. Okay. Yes. And, um, and then in 1950, they purchased um, Campbell's daughter's home on Campbell Avenue. And that was converted over the next couple of years into the Darling Fisher that stands there now, which is actually my home where my wife and children and I live. You Wait a second. You live where? At, at Darling Fisher across from a key and the candy store. That's our home. You, oh, you don't live in the chapel. You don't live, I live above the chapel. You, in, really? Yeah, yeah, at Darling Fisher. Yeah. Really? Yeah, which is wonderful because it allows us to be incredibly involved in the Campbell community. And then my office is in downtown Los Gatos at the Darling Fisher, which was... Uh, a little home that was purchased in 19, late, early 50s by the Fishers and converted into the funeral home that it is today. But it also means you're always on call. You're living I, right upstairs. Yes. <laughs> Let's I've call been in, Nicholas. <laughs> in funeral and cemetery service for over 20 years. So uh, being uh, readily available is uh, at the core of what we do. Okay. I got to ask you, you're a young guy. Why are you in the funeral business? Uh, you get asked that all yes, the time, right? Yes, I do. I do. And and the young guy is uh, quickly fleeting. As I, uh, you know, 20 years ago when I was doing this, I was definitely really young. young. Um, but I moved to California from Kansas in uh, 1999 after high school to become a professional skateboarder in San Diego with my best friend. And um, the difference between really good and great is a lot bigger than most folks that might not know skateboarding. And this is a, a mecca for it. You know, Caballeros from here and so many others. Right. But, um, but in San Diego, and somehow I ended up working in a funeral home. And really? It, uh, it was a job for a very short what period of time. What did you do? I worked at a, a large cemetery and funeral home in San Diego, and I answered the phones at night, and I worked at the front desk. And it was um, something that I very quickly found that finding connections to individuals on uh, their most difficult days was something that uh, filled, filled my cup. And wow. it was uh, an incredible thing to be a part of. And, you know, just as our culture, there was a, a woman, her name's Ginny McGregor. Um, and I'll hopefully share this with Jenny. She lives in Australia and I know her son very well. Um, they own Redemption and they had a loss in their family. And, and she was over and we were talking about uh, the stages of life and the things that we celebrate. And she said, matching, or hatchings, matchings and dispatchings. And as a society, we don't do dispatchings very well. No, we don't. And that's what I uh, endeavor to do with uh, the staff is find ways to connect with families that we haven't before. Well, and sometimes I find you can't really come up with that until you experience it yourself. Right. And I think you have had a loss in your family. Oh, I, absolutely. It actually five years ago changed uh, even the trajectory of what I wanted to do and how we do it even more. And that's when I actually moved to this incredible community. So um, you lost a brother, right? Mm -hmm. Nick, uh, what was his name? Nate. Nate, Nate yeah. yes. So is everybody named with an N in your no, family? No, uh, everyone has a J. Okay. So David James, Andrew, John, Nathaniel Joseph, Nicholas, John, and Catherine Jean. So thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Knocked out of part. <laughs> so when you lost Nate, how did that make you reevaluate and rethink the funeral business? How did it change what you did? Well, um, it... One, we were we were met with individuals that we knew. Uh, my family happens to be in some aspect of funeral and cemetery, and um, when we met with the the funeral director, the kindness was there, the empathy was there, and we had uh, beautiful services. But there was things that we had we are now doing that maybe didn't exist. That um, we have reached out at Darling Fisher to find new ways to communicate loss and grief and allow that window to open a little bit further that now we're trying to uh, embrace on a daily basis and making sure that we're we're not just settling for uh, a prayer card and a book and let's have a service and we'll do this a, a funeral in a, in a box 
and focusing more on celebrating life by creating connection and allowing individuals to better communicate with their communities, not through standard socials, but another platform that we have to communicate, which is in improving what we do. So where were you 12 years when I needed you? Yeah. When my <laughs> husband died, and it has been 12 oh. years, so I had a very, very bad experience, you know, going through grief and loss and with the people I dealt with, wasn't at your place, um, but it was tough and I really never recovered from that. And so I'm glad to hear that you've learned there is another way to handle people who are grieving. Absolutely. And you need to act sincere. It's not a good thing just, oh, we're so sorry for your loss. Well, you didn't really know me. You know, yeah. I, I, I was, I did not take it well. So I'm glad to hear that. And you know, I notice now when people pass away, it's more of a celebration of life. Mm -hmm. And that's important, isn't it? I think it's how we're reframing it, which is important because as the dispatchings is the things that, you know, imagine all of the things we do for gender reveals and when a, a baby is on the way and a baby arrives and a wedding and we celebrate those things. Our family gets together and someone lives 90 years or, or unfortunately their life was uh, cut short like your husband's and we need to tell that story better. But the most important thing uh, that I'm able to do as we're renovating the businesses and we're introducing all of these new ways for us to connect um, families during this time mm -hmm. is people. So the uh, in the rush to find all the best people to work with, one of the things that I believe that I'm most proud of in my five years with Darling Fisher and uh, Jeff Fisher is is still at Darling Fisher. He is a. I know Jeff. Tell yeah, Jeff I say I hi. I will. Yes. Jeff and his wife Peggy embraced my wife Kendall and I when we arrived, and I'm so fortunate to have uh, him in my life, both personally and professionally. But at the fabric of what any business would be, would be the people and the authenticity and the diversity of our staff, um, and the way that they meet our doors every day yeah. is really what changes. And we, we talk about it on a constant basis of, you know, uh, we have to check it at the door. I don't know if I could shut it down at night. I don't know if I could check it at the door, <laughs> but I guess you have found a way to do that. Uh, I, I think once you fully disconnect from it, then maybe it might not be for you anymore. Yeah. Um, but definitely finding a way for us to stay in touch and that fine line. Yeah. On, on the podcast that I'm endeavoring to do about grief called Guiding Grief, I met with a gentleman by the name of Nick Sanchez, and uh, he's an existential humanistic therapist. Whoa, which, I won't have you spell that. Whew, <laughs> <laughs> I had him break it down piece by piece. But uh, his guiding is making sure that you're staying in the here and now, not how you felt about something and going back to that feeling, but how do you feel right now about something that happened? And you might've been angry about it then, you might, and I'm not an expert at this. I yeah. had a conversation with yeah. him, he's an expert. Yeah. But having a conversation about that and then being able to instill that in the staff that we need to be ever present. Um, but we can't go over the, you know, if we get too close, then we can't guide and we cannot support. So, you know, I cannot let the interview end like this because community storytelling is always about fun, uplifting yes. things, which is wonderful what we're doing. Tell me something about Los Gatos. We got to end this on a on a note where I'm getting you to smile and we'll yeah. say, yeah. Uh, well, the, the, the involvement is something that uh, we love to do. So uh, constantly being involved in the Campbell Chamber of Commerce, and I'm fortunate to be the incoming president of that uh, wonderful chamber. And we do a lot in the Los Gatos Chamber. Um, many things of uh, being an ally, which is something we've recently done with the uh, Rainbow Chamber. My wife and I are extremely active in that. And just the beauty of our valley where yes. we get to celebrate lives that are, uh, in Kansas, everyone is a dearly like this. You know, it's just the way that that part right. of the country is. Here, we get to tell stories from all around the world. And every single day, we're greeted with someone else's interpretation of their own culture and their own faith. And it's really a beautiful thing to be able to understand and then guide because many times people want to celebrate their faith, but they've lived a Western life and they say, well, what do we do? But we, we happen to be a bit of experts on that so that we can dive in and then Got help it. them tell the story that they want. And then uh, and next time you go on a bike ride, I want you to come bring your bike to Los Gatos. Yeah. You haven't had a bike ride until you've ridden in Los Gatos. Yeah, the Kennedy, everything. That, <laughs> yes. That's my, one of my okay, favorite places good, to be. Okay, good, good. Well, I hope you enjoyed listening today. You know, it's a tough subject, but it's got to be told. And the celebration of life, that is so important now. And it's, it's such a, 
an important way to say goodbye to people because you're enjoying their life that they lived with you and for you and because of you. So anyway, there you go. Community storytelling. We, we talk to everybody here. Do I need to talk to you? If so, <laughs> nominate yourself or nominate a friend at kcat.org and you'll be sitting next to me next time. Thanks for being with us so much. And thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. Community Storytelling Season 3. I'm Lisa Chrysler. Thank you.